I do is and do that. Let's, let's just begin. We're going to start recording now. Everybody, welcome. I just want to introduce the amazing Maso Shan, who is a DJ international. He's doing it all over the world of Dubai and um, England when he comes back here. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And what is amazing about Matt is he was, how old were you when you went over to Dubai, dude? 22? Um, it was two years ago, so yeah, just, just turned 22. Yeah, just turned 22, I've done my research. Just turned, just turned 22, and he, um, oh, Ethan's on, hey Ethan. <laughs> just turned 22, and he had the crazy, amazing audacity to still pursue his dream, move to a foreign country with a foreign culture, with foreign understanding that's pretty, pretty scary. And he absolutely took every single step possible to achieve his dream. Now, I'm gonna break, I'm just excited, so I'm gonna slow down a little bit just here, guys. If you just joined us, hello everybody, and feel free to mute yourselves. It is all being recorded. Um, and I'm just trying to mute Finn. Finn, you think you are muted, that's crazy. I don't know what I was doing that for. Okay, um, right, and I think it's so cool, dude. I think it's so cool, obviously, to move from one place where you've had so much consistency and so much um, security uh, known to move to another place of unknown and potentially, potentially insecurity, because you never, you never know what happens, um, and keep on pursuing your dream I think it's epic and I think it's really cool because it's reflecting what's happening now with obviously the virus um, we've got to stay in our homes uh, it's really it's inconsistent it's 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 not very secure because we don't know it's a massive fear of the unknown but you challenged that back in the day and absolutely crushed it so first of all before we get too overexcited Matt I'm going to allow you the privilege of introducing yourself dude so quick fire Go for it, dude. Who are you? Thank you. Well, hi, guys. Um, awesome to be on this call with uh, the main man, Dale, as always. Um, so my name's Matt, as Dale's, Dale mentioned. Um, so majority of my lifespan, I've been a personal trainer. So that was like my main kind of um, uh, business kind of side of things, my main, um, my main employment. And then from there... About, about four or five years ago, I then went down the route of music and looking into stuff like that and then pursuing a passion in DJing. And then as Dale mentioned uh, two years ago, I moved out to Dubai for my personal training work. Um, but then on top of that, I was still doing my music stuff and then that gave me some cool opportunities over here that I, uh, that I went down. And then that brought me here. Yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah. So, so you're in Dubai right now, to clarify. Right now, as you can see, I don't know what the UK is like, but all this is sun, <laughs> which, is, which is great if you're, if you're allowed to go out inside it, outside it. <laughs> but I guess it's nice to look at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, this is so cool. So I've got, I had some questions that I pinged over to you, but just off the top, yeah. obviously... Over here in the UK, we are not on a full 24 hour lockdown at all. We're allowed to go out um, once a day for exercise um, and go food shopping if, we, if it's crucial and if we need it. Um, okay. it. What's it like over there for you? So we are similar. I think they've stepped it up a little bit from the UK though. So we're on a 24 hour lockdown, which means we're not allowed to go out at all really um no exercise no nothing um i think some of the guys are saying the vid's not working yeah i'm gonna see if i can just see, send them a message and see if they can reload it back on again dude <laughs> um so yeah carry on, buddy. sorry yeah um so we're on a 20 we're on a 24-hour lockdown which means that we can't go out at all um, we can't go out for exercise, we can't go out for uh, really anything. Um, if you do want to go out, then you've got to uh, submit for a permit, which means basically asking for permission from the government to say that we can go out. And then if that gets accepted, 
then we are allowed to go out for the hour that we're allowed to for. Oh. If it gets accepted. If it gets accepted. Majority of the time it does, but um, if it gets accepted, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, dude. So it's, 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 it's inconsistent, isn't it? It's a bit, it's a bit, whoa. How, how would you say that you are kind of coping with it? Are you, are you cool? Are you going with the flow? So the, the, the hardest part, like you said, I think is the, the inconsistency, but then it's also the unknown. Yeah. So we don't really know when it's going to, when it's going to get better or improve. Mm. So the main thing, that, and this is something that I know a lot of the guys are doing um, that I work with, and I, I, I'm, I'm with over here is that they're getting into routines or they're sticking to routines, which is, which is really important, right? And a lot of them are, even though they can have lions and stuff and they can sleep in till 10 a.m., 11 a.m., they're still getting up early. They're still doing their thing. They're still making breakfast. They're still doing some sort of exercise indoors if they can. Yeah. And I think that's the best way. Um, and that's the way I, I'm, I'm coping with things anyway. Oh, I love that, mate. That's really cool. And, and, and that's really weird you say that. Well, not weird. It's cool because I did the same thing. So today mm. I made sure that I got up at 4.45 um, to make sure that I uh, keep in that consistent routine, if that makes sense. Keep the routine flowing. Keep it. Keep my, my level, my head level. And do the things that I would normally do, but just do it from home. And uh, yeah. I think it's really, really important to have that that normality. Um, so anyway, enough about that. Enough about that. I want to talk to you, dude, because there's a lot of kids here that have absolutely smashed me with their dreams, what they want to do, what they what they're doing right now, and what they want to become. Um, so I'm going to ping over a few questions for you, dude. And these guys, if it's okay with you, are going to ping over some questions as well towards the end. Uh, but for now, um, do you know how old you were uh, roughly when you want when you knew you wanted to be a DJ? So it was on and off. So eighteen was the the first kind of taste I had. So eighteen years old, and then that went away for for reasons, and then it came back around twenty twenty one, and then from there it was kind of a consistent uh, interest. Up until now, really. I've got you. I've got you. That's, that's really cool, mate. That's really cool. Um, and it went away. And it's allowed to go away, isn't it? Um, whether it went away because of fear or something else took in, it jumped in its place or whatever. Um, but I love the quote by The Rock that says he really wanted to play in the NFL, didn't he? he really wanted to play in the NFL. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he, and that's he said, his thing, right? Yeah. And, and he said, he, said he, he, he didn't make it, he didn't make the cut. And he said, not going in the NFL was the best thing that didn't happen to him, if that makes sense. Um, and I yeah. think maybe, maybe your, your dream, per se, had to float away when you were 18 um, to, uh, to come back because now we get into what you've achieved and want to become. Obviously, there's been a bit... Oh, there's Liam. Liam's on the, on the thing. What's up, dude? <laughs> um, let me mute... Oh, he's, already, oh, he's already muted himself. What a legend. Uh, and... Uh, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't supposed to happen. Maybe the dream wasn't supposed to be emphasized then, but it did um, when you found the right time. And I think that's really, really cool because sometimes we put pressure on ourselves to go towards a dream. And if it doesn't happen straight away, we get upset and we're like, no, mm, like that. For sure. And that, that can be the killer of so many big things to come, right? Especially if it's early on. And like you say, not putting that pressure on yourself, especially being so young and having so many more years to be able to fulfill whatever it is that you want to do right yeah um but like you said i think a big believer in certain things happen for a reason mm -hmm. so if something's not working out now or you're you're not sure or there's always something that you know doesn't happen straight away then it, it might need to be like that like you said and then that later down the line then it can come around again and you'll be like ah, okay if that didn't happen or if that happened then i wouldn't be doing this or that which can be a big positive, right? Dude, massive positive. Massive. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason. And it, mm. for me, I've had to learn a lot of patience with that. Um, yeah, for sure. It's definitely, it's not something that you can, I think, comes naturally. It might do to some people, but not for me. 
Yeah. It wasn't something that came naturally, so it's a big learning curve for that. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. So obviously you went to Dubai, and it, you, by the way, but just, just to, like Matt said, he's personal training in Dubai, and you are currently doing that at the moment, which is incredibly wise. Um, not now, now, because of everything that's happened. Um, mm. But it's an incredibly prestigious company, isn't it? The personal training. It's a, it's a big... Yeah, it's a very, very um, high standard company. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one, that was one of my um, dreams or mini goals back in the UK was to uh, work for this company. And um, it actually taught me a lot of resilience. So I applied for it, I think, twice. And I failed on both times. And I didn't get it. And then I applied a third time. And then that's when I, I got through and I got the job. Yeah. Which was which was uh, a big uh, a big wake up call to say that things don't happen straight away and it's okay if they don't right like just what we just said yeah amazing yeah. absolutely amazing Dude, just quick on that you said dream and then you, you then you quickly changed it to goal did, why did you do that for because it used to be a dream as in it used to be something that I thought maybe can happen maybe can't happen and then figuring out that obviously it can now it's a goal right mm. so goals can be achieved i think and especially if you change the dream to a goal it becomes more what's the word tangible it's something that you can physically get whereas maybe a dream maybe it's something that you wish for or you something that you only have in your sleep right um but yeah and then and then knowing what is doable and what what you can do on the on the basis of history repeating itself then yeah for sure yeah, that's epic that's really cool yeah because i think like a dream it may be a wish and there's no certain yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's no certain yeah. with a wish is there but if you if you if you get if you have a dream guys listening if you have a dream write it down on paper i know for a while that matt did that he wrote it down on paper because it doesn't so much become a wish anymore. It becomes something, like you've said, tangible. And tangible means in your grasp, something you can touch. Um, you write it down on paper and it becomes more real. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And it's, it's a good practice as well, right? Wow. It's cool to write stuff down and then to tick them off. Yeah. But I know that that's what I love doing. Uh, if I've got a little bit of a list, I like ticking them off and then write it off. And it's a little bit of a game as well, mm. which is quite cool. So, so, dude, you, 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 to be honest with you, I know, I, I know what you're doing, you're do, maybe you're doing it accidentally, but you're underplaying, I think, this, this role of uh, getting into the personal training world in that prestigious company. That's a huge deal, a huge deal, huge dream, turned into a huge goal, achieved, tick, thank you very much, but you didn't stop there, did you? What did you, what happened? So, after about, I think, six months, eight months, so I've found my feet, obviously new country, new job. So I wanted to make sure I was set up and I was, I knew where everything was. Like I knew where the shops were, I knew where the beach was, which was more important. Um, and knew, I knew that the, the job, right? I needed to get comfortable with that. But then once all that had finished, or once I got comfortable with that, then I thought, well, why don't I pick up what I left off at home with the music stuff and the DJ stuff? So then I kind of went down that road and picked up picked it back up really, started going into that. And then um, certain things happened um, for, I guess, the right reason, right? And it wasn't, it was a mixture. It was stuff of A, being in the place at the right time, but then also having to put yourself in these places because it wasn't just going to come to you. But then also understanding the consistency of needing to keep at it every day. And this was a place where I kind of, it clicked and it, re and I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was me just having a separation from the UK to here. Um, but it something just clicked in my mind and said, right, if I want to do this, just like I did with the um, personal training job, I need to keep on doing it. I need to keep at it every day. Even if something doesn't happen the first day, the first, the first week, the first month, even the year, I just need to keep on doing it. And then if I enjoy it and I still love it, which I do, then something's going to happen. And then it did. And then that brought me to having my first epic festival, which was 
uh, last December. Dude, that's cool. So he's, he's jumping ahead, everybody. He's, he's stealing my thunder. I want to ask him those questions. But that's <laughs> so, so, so you, you, what you were doing was you were, you, you had your goal, post rent wicked. That's consistent now. Um, how you know when you went to Dubai? What what time frame were you uncomfortable? Were you like, oh my gosh, I'm a bit fearful. I, I'm not. I, I'm insecure. You know what I mean. Yeah, so um, it actually started before. So um, the last two weeks before moving here, that all started. And then that got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I was on the plane over coming to Dubai and I looked at my ticket and it said one way. And then that's when it got real. Because normally... Dude, one way. It's two ways, right? It's a return. So you think cool, I've got this boarding pass and this boarding pass, or I've got this one and I need to print off my other one. But there was none of that. It was just a one way. And I've still got that ticket in my room. I still keep that because that's a very memorable moment. And um, that's when it yeah, felt... It well. Yeah, massively. Yeah. No, no, massively, massively. And that's when it got overwhelming. And I landed in Dubai and I thought, right, okay, I've got so much stuff that I need to sort out and so much stuff I need to, I need to like find out. I, I don't even know. I, I knew where I was staying in a hotel, but I didn't know where it was. I didn't know where work was. I didn't know anyone here. Um, I had obviously a limited amount of money as well. Yeah. So I was like, I can I need to I need to sort something out. I need to get comfortable with, with this uncomfortableness. Mm. Um, and it lasted, I think about a month after that. Yeah. So all in all, six weeks of feeling uncomfortable and feeling a bit nervous, I think. I love that. That's cool. I, I think you being nervous made it even more special for you, I think. Yes, it did, for sure. Mm. For sure. I think, I think if something means to you a lot, then you will feel a little bit of nerves and maybe some butterflies in your stomach, which is good, right? Like That's not a bad thing. And I think if you get that, then that's something that maybe pay attention to and be like, okay, well, obviously this thing that I'm nervous about, um, I, I care about. Yeah, hundred percent. That's awesome. Um, and then when that consistency happened, it was it was almost as if you were like this. It was just like, um, you are oh, scared, 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 scared. Oh, I'm not scared anymore. I'm on a plateau. What can I do to make myself a little bit scared again? Uh, I don't know. Maybe tell random people that I'm a DJ and maybe get some gigs. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Because I've seen a bit of your Instagram, dude, um, and there's a lot of you playing DJing on a boat. It looks sick. It looks so sick, guys. Just a lot. Like, I mean, come a on. A lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. So, <laughs> your first set on a scale of one to ten, how nervous were you? Just as nervous as I am now. So, which is um, like. It was massive, as in that every time now I play, I, I have DJ gigs, I'm still very, very nervous. Really? Still very, very nervous. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That never goes away. Okay. So as much as nerves as I feel now when doing the gig, it's the same. Um, the first one obviously was maybe a little bit more because, like, you know, it's, it's a new place. It's, it's a new bunch of people as well, which was like a big, big, uh, big um, difference and a big uh, challenge. But, you know, I still, still get nervous. But again, I think going back to what we said, it's something that you care about. So I think if you care about it big enough, then that's going to make you a little bit nervous for it, right? Exactly. So how many people, so your first gig was on a boat. So let's, I don't know if it was, but let's just pick your favourite time on the, on the boat when you were DJing on a boat. Sick. Um, how many people were you, were, you, were you playing to? So I think there was about 35, 40 people. 35, 40 people, that's awesome. Okay, okay, so now, now, um, when you went over to the festival, how many people were you playing mm. to? So that was five to 9,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can you hear that? Five to 9,000. So that jumped up exponentially. <laughs> that jumped up real quick. Some people... Real yeah, dude, some people have a fear of success, don't they? It's just like, well, let's say, for example, I'm Matt and I'm a DJ. I only want to play to me first. 
and then I want to play to my friends and then I want to play to a group of people like 35 and then I want to play in a club of about 100 then I want to play in a bigger club of about 250 and then you see what I'm going incremented sets but no Matt was just like no, 35 5,000 boom there you go you know and it's just like a big set but some people are scared of that and that's okay but we can't let that stop them so dude what festival was it and let's talk about that let's do it so the festival was called I don't really know Noodles. and um <laughs> And um, it was originally in Europe, this festival. So that's where they started it. And then they brought it over to Dubai, over to the Middle East. And then I got the absolute pleasure of opening the festival, doing the first uh, gig, the first set on, uh, on stage when everyone was coming in and uh, getting ready to have a party. Dude, epic. Oh my gosh. And you were um, with all that playing for all those people. You you opened up the set. You were the first DJ. So who were you? Like any of the guys here know who you were kind of like like playing with, DJ Maybe, maybe not. I mean, the guys that were, I was opening for, they've done a lot of songs that they had with um like a lot of singers like uh, David Guetta and um a lot of big big DJ names. Um nice. which was really, really cool because then it was not only being able to open a set for them, but then it was also having that little um, a fan fanboy moment of meeting these people that you thought you would never meet, let alone open for. Yeah. And then this happened and you're thinking, you lost for words. There was a couple of times where I met them in passing and I definitely should have said more, <laughs> but I was that shocked <laughs> that I didn't. <laughs> so, so you had to have a certain amount so for your journey so far, from moving from comfort to a new country, um, from getting to know the culture, from then going, applying, 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 getting rejected like so many times for this gym, uh, then finally going, looking at your ticket, having a one, ray, one, one way, with no return, one way ticket to the foreign country, but like on a 10, 12 hour flight, all the way over there, and then to live, meet new people that you've never met before, maybe different languages, different cultures, and then you thought, right, okay, this is cool now, I'm good with this now, I'm a DJ, let's learn, let's learn, let's learn, let's learn. I can guarantee you, I'm going to say the, the C-bomb, everybody, crap, I can guarantee that Matt was crap the very first time he put a deck up and started mixing, guaranteed it, and then he went on to do the boats, 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 and then he went on to a big, big festival, which is so amazing. You must have had to have a certain amount of mental toughness to keep on going. Mate, A, is that true? And B, what would you say your one tip would be that worked for you to, to, have, to sustain and keep going that mental toughness? Um, 100% true. Um, <laughs> that was, that, honestly, that I can't like, hit, hit, it, hit the nail in one, mate. Um, so the one thing that kind of kept me going through all this failure and you know being knocked back and having just bad days because I think everyone has bad days as well is um focusing on what you can do and your what you can control and that was the main thing and the the times that I felt bad and I wanted to quit and I didn't want to go out and ask for gigs and I didn't want to you know, spend three hours after work mixing was because I found myself focusing on others and what other people were doing. And then that would either make me feel good or bad. And then that would have an impact in what I then wanted to do. So I think the best thing that I could say is to focus on what you want to do. And then if you can kind of put all your energy into doing that thing that A, you like and enjoy, that you want to do well in then you're not really going to have anything else i guess to compare with and then you're not going to have anything then to you know make you feel bad make you feel anything like that that's that's the that's the main thing that i would say I don't for the mental toughness side of things so 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 what i heard a few things and definitely heard the first bit where you said just focus on you <clears throat> um don't get distracted and just Keep on going, and I'll keep oh, on and going. It's in your control as well. So, what is in your control? So you can control what you 
can put into it. So whatever it is. So let's say, I don't know, I'm going to pick something really random here. Horse riding. Why not? You can control what, so what can you control with horse riding? You can control how much you practice, how much you learn, how much you know about each horse, I guess. All that stuff. That's what you can control. But what you can't control is what other people are doing with the horse riding or what other people are doing with life full stop. And I think if you then take that away and put that to one side and then just focus on that stuff, A, I think what you want to achieve becomes a lot quicker because it just does. You've not got all these distractions. You've not all got, got this stuff going on around you. But also B, I think you're going to have a lot more fun going through the process. It's not going to have as many ups and downs. It still will have ups and downs, but it won't have as many. And you'll be more kind of, what's the word, hitting the arrow in the target rather than going all over the place. Dude, I hope everyone was listening to that because that was so important. That was so vital because when you were telling that story, dude, the telling, telling what, what you've learned, I was seeing me in what I've been doing. Um, which is really cool. But let's let's That's pretend let, let's pretend really cool. everyone listening, let's pretend that I'm I'm your I've, I'm your friend, I've known you since I was eight. Okay, let's pretend that. And then you and you said, Oh, I want to be a DJ and I and I did this. <laughs> what you wanna be a DJ? And you said, Yeah, no, I do. So it's like, shut up, be you can't be a DJ. You've never done anything like that in your life. What would you think about me? And what would you what would you what would you, what would you be your process? mean yeah yeah <laughs> there you go that's it kieran you helped you helped me out cheers kieran <laughs> mean. exactly so what's your next step then oh there you go and supportive disrespectful yeah there's a few people coming on just here have i gone mate am i still here no you're there there you go okay you. there we go um, what, would you, what would be your next step then? So obviously, if I said that, um, how would how would you respond? What would you do? There we go. Are you there, Matt? Yep. There. Sorry, mate. Cool. No I can't hear you. Can you hear me I now? Hear you. I can hear you now. Okay. Great. Right. Ask the question again. So, okay. so if I did that and I was a friend, how would you yep. deal? So, what would happen if? Because it's happened a few times. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, sure. What? Yeah, what, dude. What's so, it mean? Did it? You know who it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so. The, the, the best thing that I could say, and I didn't know at the time, and at the time it kind of got to me a little bit because I didn't really know any better. And especially because it was something that I was so passionate with, I took it very personally. And I thought, this is something that I, I, I love and I, I aspire to be, and I'm going to put all my effort in. And then to have someone tell you otherwise is quite a bit of a disheartening time, right? But now if I look back at it and I would tell my younger self, I guess, um, it would be that the reasons why they say stuff, whether it's positive or negative, is down to them, not down to you. And it's what they're going through. Now, something like DJing, right? It's not like you can, there's people that do very, very well from DJing. So then sometimes it could be from a place of jealousy that someone's saying that stuff about. Or maybe they just don't have anything else that they're excited about. And if they see you getting excited about it, they kind of get a little bit annoyed because they wish they felt that way. So there's all these different things, I think, that reason why people say certain stuff. And if I was going to say to my younger self, it would be just to kind of maybe have a bit of sympathy with them and empathy and say, okay, cool. That's, that's your decision. That's your um, that's your choice of to say on that matter, but I know what I want and and I'm gonna stand strong on that. Dude. Wow. Wow. And I wish that I said that to my younger self as well. 
I think, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it would be a massive bonus if we could have had that mentality when we were, yeah. I don't know, maybe even like 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, dude, I, I was yeah. going to listen to that because that was absolutely amazing, like, absolutely dead right. Um, okay, dude, I know you've got a dash um, because you've got a meeting, another meeting. We've got about seven minutes left. If we've got time, we may rejig this, but before I've we... have got 20 minutes. Oh, you've got 20 minutes? Okay, cool. All right. So 20 minutes, I'll... 2 o'clock. Okay, I'll keep on asking some questions and keep frying them over. We have to come off. Oh, we, you see, we have to come off this one um, because mm. it's only got seven minutes left, unfortunately. Um, so then we can go back on it again. But I hope we don't get all that messing around thing that we did last time. Let's just, see. just do exactly what we did last time, guys. Um, and yeah, so, um, dude, you you. You answered it accidentally, my question. So my question was going to be, um, what would, what would, if you could go back and give your 11-year-old self um, motivation to impact the world or do something of service and whatever, um, what would be that, what would be those words that you say? What would it be? Um, okay, so... How many words is it? Four. <laughs> Do what you enjoy. And I think that's the I think that's the pinnacle of like what I would tell my eleven year old self, I guess. Um, if you can do what you enjoy and don't worry about what others think of that, then I think you're gonna be very, very uh, successful in whatever you do whether it's being very happy, um, having a good future, whatever it is. I think if you can do those two things, that would be the best. And also making yourself uncomfortable, which I think is very important. I think if you can start making yourself uncomfortable, and it doesn't have to be big things, it can be small things, right? So maybe it would be, I don't know, maybe at school you would don't want to do certain sports or you don't want to be in a sports team or you don't want to put your hand up for something. Maybe if it's just asking a question, right? Because I used to be very scared of ask, asking questions at school. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. But I think if you can start doing that, especially at an age, a younger age, that will only get, you'll only get better at it. It's kind of like training a muscle. You'll just get stronger at it. And then over time, these more uncomfortable situations will get bigger and bigger but you'll get better at handling them to the point where you can do stuff you can do anything really awesome that's epic yeah i love that do what you want to do stay in your own lane do what you enjoy do what you enjoy and sometimes you may not be but you may not even know what you enjoy sometimes maybe because you're, you're you're the age you are now you you don't know what there is in this world to enjoy but when you find it just stick to it and just ignore all the noise what people say um man that's cool that is cool that's very cool um i'm gonna close this one down now and i'd love to have a picture of everybody doing doing a little thing like we, we always do this by the way mate um so what we'll say is what we'll do is we'll put um We'll get a little photo just there. <laughs> and then we'll get a big view. And guys, let's all have a little bit of a wavy wave, okay? So you ready? We're gonna say goodbye to Matt, but we're gonna come back, okay? Everybody should just get on, get on. Um, when, get on exactly the same way you did before, okay? And you, then you can ask your questions. So we're gonna have a drink of water and then come back because we've got 20 minutes left. So that's really awesome. So guys, give him a wave. See you later, everybody. You can speak if you want. You can mute yourselves and wave. Let's do, let's do that. But mute yourselves. Bye. And... Bye. 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 Ah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 How are you doing that? Awesome. All right, guys. Um, think of your questions. Yeah. Think of your questions. What you want to ask Matt? Um, you know his story now. You know his tips for mental toughness. Um, oh, Liam's got a banana on his face. And uh, make sure, <laughs> <laughs> banana boy, banana. Yeah. Man.
Think of your questions, everybody. We're going to switch this off, and I want you to get on exactly the same way as you did before. Okay? Can we do that? Yeah. Bye Let's bye. do that. Let's do it. Let's do bye. it. Bye. 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 bye.